what is good okay so I wanted to share some of the some of this uh <laughs> I wasn't originally going to make a video from this uh, inspiration, but that's just how the muse works. Uh, we go with what inspires us, and yeah, go with the flow, yo. <laughs> um, I'll leave a link to this like I always do. This is uh, Owen Benjamin, and... Marty Leeds. Um, I'm not big into Owen Benjamin, but from the few things I've seen of him, and then after watching this, I, it, it's 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 pretty cool. Um, I like what he's about for the most part. <laughs> but yeah, this, this video is about uh, the Trinity. So Mar Marty comes on to. Kind of shed some light uh, and to help Owen kind of dispel um, the illusion that has been thrown on, not just just to the Trinity, but but to everything. Because you know, oftentimes whenever people uh, wake up on on certain layers of things, you know, they look at, for instance, the Trinity, and they're like, "Well, where's the mom and uh, the the woman in that?" It's completely male dominated so obviously it's, it's corrupted well that's one way to look at it but another way to look at it is to transform the wordage into um, something grander than just uh, male oriented there's no right or wrong it's just it, it literally is just your the only limitations that there are is, is the limitations you put upon yourself. And I really enjoyed this because at, um, at first, you know, Marty was laying out some of uh, what he says groundwork and <laughs> going into the uh, how the numbers. Uh, and the coatings and the and the gematria can uh, shed light on uh, deeper esoterics of reality and how it's all connected and what that's hinting at. And uh, Owen Benjamin <laughs> uh, kept kept you know pulling Marty back in like, well, let's let's stay like on the point. Like, how does this relate? So that you know, for for the people who. Uh, do not want to hear all all the numbers that, that it will make sense to them so I uh, uh, eventually grabbed hold of his awareness uh, more than anything was just just the triune nature of uh, reality and also time he, he like he really liked the the concept of transforming linear time. Uh, past, present, future, into into one. But uh, throughout all religion, there's going to be uh, the Trinity factor of uh, death, life, and rebirth, and then the uh, personifications and images. The imagery that that's uh, attached to each one of those things, the uh, you could say, you could say egregors even uh, the the symbolism of the, the the God and the Lord technology. Shout out to James True, and it's awesome. Like <laughs> James True pops in here even in, in the. In the in the chat, and then it's also mentioned throughout. So it's, this is all these synchronicities. It's it's all it's very fucking beautiful to see right now. And then these guys tie tie this stuff, and they just keep talking about um, basically homesteading. Uh, Marty Leeds is basically living off grid, 
in, in the fact that he's uh, solar power and self-sustaining. And then they mention that, you know, that that's where a lot of people are realizing and waking up to, you know, we, we got to do this. <laughs> So I have a couple places that I'm going to skip to and hopefully I can remember everything. And I have a card that I drew which is uh, very, very synchronistic and symbolic of a lot of things. A coupling, a union um, of relation. And it doesn't have to be externalized. Like with all, uh, you know, quote unquote readings or oracles. It's, it's not, you know, where, where pe people fucking get lost in the sauce is they externalize everything. So, whenever you, you take it and apply it to your personal life, your personal perceptions, that's where you're going to have the greatest growth and expansion of your awareness. When you look at right now, what, what what are some of the symbolism of COVID? Well, number one, they're making you wear a mask, right? That they, they want you to wear a mask, and which is, which is what obviously symbolic of covering up your breath, covering up your mouth. When you realize once again, as we just did, that you are a perfected craftwork of God's perfect design. That's what you are. You're a child of God. You're a gift of God. You reflect His purposeful and beautiful creation. Correct. Yes. Re Reflection. Okay. Um, and I wanted to include that because that's, uh, where I'm going to be heading towards with, uh, the material that I'm going to cover a lot of. I, I've done it here and there, um, with the ringing cedars, um, and, and that's going to be... Uh, at least in the in the immediate future, that's going to be the reading material, uh, the ideology, the symbolism, and uh, the the stepping points that I'm going to use to leapfrog and jump and not just leap forward, but uh, not just flash forward, but flash back, flash in, uh, because like with this Trinity, it's not. It's not just about focusing on, on one side, one aspect of it. We have to collapse. We have to understand all of it. And what, what that inner standing is, is making it all one. The three into one. It's very important that we, that we recognize and realize. Also that we release the spells, but, but we... we have to realize our, our true origins and how that was manipulated how we've got to the point that we've come to collectively The, the purpose is not to dwell in the past. The purpose is to see with clarity truth. That that's that's the only uh, inspiration is truth and beauty and flowing within this. Why is it important? But but why? You know, a lot of, a lot of people don't want to look at the past because they don't want to look at their past because they they want to hold on to certain things, uh, certain ideologies that they want to let it be okay to continue living how they live their life, and this is the case with a lot, a whole many layers of, of things why people won't look into things why people will shy away from 
and this is this is what it is meant by you know people are, get uh, triggered or offended. That's because that's that's the very thing that you need to integrate. So whenever you are triggered or offended, you are pushing away the reflection that needs to be integrated. Why is it important to, to know about our past? Because that's going to tell you, once you realize the true story, not his or her story, and not just your story, but but it, it, it's the triune there, that uh, another fucking uh, trinity. And then also realize that the history, and I know I'm speaking to the choir here, but the history that you have been told is, uh, has been corrupted and is not, it's based on, it's based on not even half truths. There, there's, there's little, uh, bits of truth mixed in with a certain narrative to, uh, direct energy and awareness into certain agendas. And away from realizing the truth inside of you. So yeah, this was very synchronistic for, to me for many reasons. Um, I have been wanting to read a, a certain specific um, text about the very first creation of money. And uh, also how that ties into uh, Damon, Demon, uh, Democracy, and... Tonight, I really recognize and realize why I haven't, why that hasn't happened yet. Why I haven't read that and made that video. And that's because there was another text that I need to attach with that. So that we get a clearer uh, vantage point and perspective upon, it's not just about money or, or slavery. It's about why, how. It, it originated from. So I'm going to be I'm going to be reading from and talking about origin points. Origin, not just the origin of corruption, but but here, you know, why I stopped here, is the origin of you. And yeah, it, it's going to be um, with an ideology of creationism. So creator and created. So if. Uh, you are hardcore against the idea of having a, or, or there being a creator. Then uh, that's going to be something you, you need to get over as in get not not even get under just get in is that think you use the power of your mind to piece together what makes the most sense whose theory makes the most sense to you does it does it make more sense that everything just kind of uh, happened out of the universe um you know uh, randomly coming together and then um eventually uh things uh out of chaos came came order does that make more sense to you evolution or does it make more sense that obviously we can see that this matrix this realm is holographic so does it make more sense that 
a being like a human came about holographically from another being that was in the image in the same image because you look everywhere throughout nature it's all holographic it's all har har harmonics and frequency and a certain ratio it's not just about the numbers it's about a design so the question is do you feel that this design came about spontaneously or do you feel that the, this, this design was created with intent but so when they cover up your mouth what what are they doing in symbol well what was the first thing that god did god spoke all of creation into manifestation did he not he said god said god said let there be light and that's the logos that's the word so your words, when you speak, in, w in one way, in one reflection, reflect that first moment of creation where God unleashed himself into all of creation, right? He said, I'm, I'm making this thing. Here we go. Let, letting out the light. Letting out Christ, right? It's also covering up your breath. It's one of the first things God did. Breathe life into the nostrils, right? That's your breath, right? So that alone is symbolic of like, shut your mouth, shut your mouth, and quit breathing. Yeah, it's a death. square, too. Yeah, with well, death. It's death, right? Okay. Now, they're asking... So yeah, the the mask bullshit is is many layers of just retardation. Um, you know, s symbolic of go along with with what you're being told. Don't speak out about it. It's, it's a muzzle. You know, keep quiet, and then also continue to you know breathe in um, less oxygen because of that, and then also that will hinder your immune system as well. So uh, we're in like full-blown multi-tier, multi-layered uh, ignorance program. But, you know, it's up to you how much, how, what you want to perceive and go along with, uh, how you want to flip the scripts for, your, for yourself and your own life. Because uh, this can be, you know, oh my god, we're going through the, the most craziest, uh, darkest, most corrupted, evilest thing I, that's ever happened. And, you know, uh, for quite a long time in quote-unquote recorded history. Or you can see it as... Uh, A falling way, a, a a a light that is being shown on the corruption, and so that is being heightened and put on display for people to see and choose how they want to respond, what they want to see. It's it's always a choice. What do you want to see in your reality? And it's not just about love and light. It's just not. It's not just about seeing the good, or or even seeing the good and the evil. It's about the middle ground. Like I said in my last one, uh, the sweet spot, the integration, recognizing that it's it just is, and then choosing where you go from there, how you choose to grow from there, the ideas that you allow to sprout because of the root structures, the foundations that are within you. So a lot of what's happening right now is a uh, shifting of foundations. 
so that people's uh, root systems, their root belief systems, can be unearthed, and they can make they can begin to uh, think a little bit more clearly, a little bit more freely. They can actually use their own thoughts and images instead of someone else's. you to stay how many feet apart six, six. feet how, how deep did they bury you is it six feet is it 72 inches yeah. pretty 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 clear to see if you're not if you got two freaking brain cells playing pong over the old noggin there right yeah. okay now six feet is also what it's 72 inches well for the people that follow this channel uh my channel uh lord jesus christ our savior is 13 27 and 32 and that equals 72. so in other words they're keeping christliness apart from one another and they're focusing on death. That's 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 exactly what social distancing is. Once again, I'm just going to throw a few of these out. Social distancing equals 59. Jesus Christ equals 59. Lord Jesus Christ equals 72. They're keeping you 72 so inches apart. So yeah, it's not it's not a focusing on death. It's it's a uh, it's a focusing on the anti mind, and we'll get into that. A little bit later, why that is, why all this is necessary, so that we don't continue to repeat it. Why the anti mind is necessary in accordance and correlation with mind. Uh, balance. It's all about balance. When you have too much mind, that that can become unbalanced because if you don't, if you're not aware of the original essences, the original universal energies that make up your very being, and this goes into emotion as well, it ties into feeling then too much mind can and will lead to where we're at, a corruption. Why? We'll get into that. Ties back into the ego. Ties back into vanity. Not being balanced. Players are hilarious. Right now we're suing Patreon, and just so happens that uh, the number of bears that are backing me in this whole thing is 72. Like, it, it just comes out of nowhere. It's like, so we have we have 72 of my supporters are currently involved in a lawsuit against Patreon. Just, that's the number that, that it is. Well, it's in the 90s, and then Patreon came back. It, it ended up being 72. And you're just like, okay, there's more happening here than, than meets the eye. <laughs> so, you know, when, uh, there's something, anyway, that's a few of the things with COVID, right? Uh, COVID equals 19 in English Kamatria, which is a cipher they got from the Bible for people that are not familiar with that. But one of the things you were just mentioning about, like, all the names and stuff like that, and it's like a lot of people want to just say that's all conspiracy. That's that's happening. There are people behind the scenes that are making these fake names and putting these characters out there and they're false flag, you know, whatever, they're crisis actors, whatever. There's also a level of poetry that happens in the world that God's doing himself. And I've experienced it directly. Things that are synchronicities, weird sort of circumstances, numbers that come up every once in a while that you're like, look, that is directly affects my life in some way. And I know it wasn't created by anybody. It's just one of those cosmic weird things. I think God's a poet. Okay, so yeah, he just said God's a poet. But, and... Um, this is just the many facets and and manifestations. Uh, that's the better word. Uh, the many manifestations that you could term as a divine intellect, uh, divine being, divine inspiration, divine contemplation, or God, whatever word you want to use, creator, whatever. You don't you don't have to believe in a certain you know type of God. There's no have-tos here. Uh, 
There just is. There's just choice. Do you choose to think freely and clearly and choose inspiration and joy and life and love? Or do you choose to give your thought away and be encapsulated in, in a square, in, in, a, in a mentality of fear and entrapment? So yeah, you you could say God is a poet because because uh, creation what what was the what was the beauty was the poetry, and so uh, you know the constant muse that we find the inspiration is through this beauty, and especially whenever you can tap into it inside of you, and it's going to be consistently and constantly reflected to you back to you. And, and your engagements in life and your engagements with people. The synchronicities. You're going to start to make sense of why synchronicities happen to you. And that, you know, at first you have to realize that they are happening sp specifically for you. And that there is a very a direct message for you to pay attention to something. To keep making connections and unions with a certain mentality and reality and vibration. Uh, and the synchronization of all of these things. Yeah. I think that's God's doing that stuff all the time. It isn't to say there aren't people behind the scenes that are, you know, making the woman be whale sex. And of course there are, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, when, when I write my third book and the books just happen to show up on my doorstep the 314th day of the year, and I didn't plan that shit. Well, yeah. you know what I mean? That's where it's like, whoa, what's that? What, what's that going on? Right. That to me seems more like living poetry than it is. Like what they're telling us, the world is nuts and bolts and gears and cogs and shit. You know, well, it's only so much of it is the the rhythm of music and uh, and the enunciation of of syllables. You know, and, and the math is everywhere. It, it's it's really some fascinating stuff. The enunciation of syllables. It's the the feeling in the words as well. Because, uh, whenever someone's mentality is connected with their heart and that pours out in, through poetry and expression in the words, those words come to life in people. There's a distinct, uh, difference between someone regurgitating something that there's uh, no life in their words no emotion monotone and then someone that's speaking with inspiration and co completely immersed and, and encapsulated within this feeling of inspiration To where a flow, this is the flow state. The flow just happens. And we, we begin to tap into a language of living imagery. And all illusions of separation and barriers melt away within this connection. This living language. 
So I'm gonna try to find this other other point of awareness here. That was the second. I meant to skip to that, but I just went ahead. I was so close to the first, but I hadn't played it. So I'm gonna try to find the third point. Being the uh, the counter effect to uh, the agenda be being pushed heavily right now, and it's not just being one one side, one, one. It's not just opposing or or um, revolting. It's not about revolution. It, it really is not about revolution, unless. You transform your mentality of that word, of all words, but especially that one. Rise up. Stand up. Ugh. Fist. Well. Are you rising up or are you rising within? As in. Taking back your power, you know, people want to throw out the term uh, uh, being a sovereign being. What, what does that entail? Start, not just start asking questions, but you, you really it would behoove everyone. <laughs> I can't believe I use that word. Uh, it, would, it would benefit everyone to not just ask questions, but to start to answer their own damn questions for themselves. Yes, research is important, and, and then recognizing the research as in search, finding the things within you again, and then recognizing that once you have queries and questions, that oftentimes the answer lies within the problem, because there is no problem. There's only flow. And finding your ways around the impedances. Not just through, because we're not just destroying. It's, it's a reconstruction that's happening. Reconfiguration that's happening. I know what's coming. I know what they're planning on doing, in, in a sense, that they want to take over this world. They're just sit down. They're going directly against God's will. God's will is giving you freedom. God's will is giving you liberty. God's will is giving you the power to stand up and be, have fortitude and strength and all that sort of stuff. Satan's just want to do the opposite. So we know what's coming. So it's how we react and how we respond. You know? what, uh, so what do you think is coming in the next year? Like, do you, do you think there's going to be major policy changes? How will it affect rural people? 
people like us that are re-empowering ourselves? What, what should we uh, watch out for? Well, I mean, what I can see happening is just they're going to make it next to impossible to continue to operate in that machine, in that realm, without obeying to their demands. So, and they're already doing it. I mean, it seems like it's like, oh, if you don't take the vaccine or whatever, you can't fly. Oh, if you don't do this, you can't do this. Oh, if you don't do the tracking program, well, you can't work at this job. Oh, if you don't go to get the COVID test, you can no longer work here. Blah, 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 blah. So it's slowly just going to move out all the people that are standing against it, you know. And so from there, it's like, well, it's it's like what I saw, like what you saw coming, what all I'm sure tons of people here saw coming three, four, five years ago. Yeah, I better start doing my own shit, huh? Better start having a homestead. And And this is the thing that like you know if 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 you saw you know some of this stuff and then you fall into the ideology of oh I've got to prep you know I've got to have bug out bags and, and all this stuff or you take that to another another level and realize I need to become self-sustainable and then th this whole purpose of me sharing this is going to be the next level of this. Uh, the true essence within homesteading or the homestead movement, you could even call it. Because Merca is the king, the prince of the air. So... The illusions are our thickest here. Because uh, in quite a few other places in the world right now, this homesteading has been for a long time and is currently amping up hardcore. And... A great many mindsets are, are changing. Collective mentalities are begin, beginning to find their way back to uh, truth inside and as well as planting that within the earth. Having, recognizing and realizing Just how necessary it is to have your own space. And truly, it, it's a space of eternity. Because of all, all... All the points of awareness and all the planes of existence that's being engaged whenever you have your own space of being in a homestead. And whenever you engage life in a manner that you not just grow your own food. But you do it in a manner that it's with an awareness, an all encompassing awareness of all the planes of beingness collapsing within this home the living garden so this is where I see uh, the future um, that's the future that I consistently envision and I consistently paint living images and in the realms of mentality in the realms of, 
of not just dream, but a, a living dream. How do I how do I do this? I I make it real. I I, I imbue everything within my imagination to life. It's all experiential. I, I can taste it, I can feel it, I can touch it. But I don't just do this for me specifically. It, it, this is a, a whole full, a whole full spectrum. You can do this for yourself in whatever capacity that you want and that's going to manifest for you. This is this is literally what manifestation is, is you bring your dreams to life. And it's that's going to happen even quicker and more with more speed. When you can live it when, when, whenever what I mean by that is within the dreaming you experience it as as if it is realer than real and they get the gears um, of the universe if, if you want to call it that that's just you know certain terminology about how the workings happen. Uh, the universe goes into play immediately with the power of your inspiration. And whenever you combine your dreams of inspiration with your felt energy, especially whenever you combine it with love, then the manifestations will happen, the synchronicities will happen very quickly, very fluidly. And they will continue to give you hints at where the continuity is, where the connection is. So I will read from this card now. I can get situated. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. Two of Cups. Relation. Two people circle round inside a fairy ring of mushrooms and flowers. Hands held high in a toast. By their commitment in cups, symbols of emotions, they are coupled. The faces of the dancers show both happiness and trepidation for the future. The steps they take together draw the gods that bless their union. As in the lover's card, Pan and Quan Yin, 
bring pleasure and peace. A star shines inspiration and healing down on the new couple. And at the edge of the ring, a serpent lies coiled in the shape of infinity. This card shows the beginning of an important relationship or a new phase in a current one. Love, once lost, may be found again. A promise is made, friendship pledged, and trust begins to grow. Courtship is a dance, a dynamic interplay of opposites. From it, a harmony of forces, both inner and outer, emerges. Cooperation, sympathy, and possibly romance blossom within this loving and healing union. And romance not in the form of lust, I will add. In the form of loving embrace. The Two of Cups can also indicate aspects within yourself finding peace together. Remember that you must learn to love yourself, to truly love another. Absolutely. So yeah. That's it for that one. Um, so yeah, I wanted to make this just just to set my intentions and to make clear my where my awareness is going. It's it's in a transformation of getting clear, remembering our roots, moving forward. Yes, it's not just about the past. It's also not just about the future. It's not just about creating because whenever we create and we haven't learned from and, and integrated our true past, then we will continue to folly. That has been the case with many cycles now, and that's over. That is done. Integration. This is the time of making all of it into one. Collapsing the present and the past. Uh, I'm sorry. Collapsing it into the present. Collapsing the past and the future into the present. Making a living trinity. Finding the harmony and the balance. And. Creating from this space and place. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the future. I'm, I'm not caught up in any of this uh, shit, you know, that's going on. That's not affecting my internal world. Um, if anything, it's a signal that, yeah, dude, this is going to be good. I can't wait. And I won't because I'm going to create. So uh, let's do this shit. Let's fucking do it. Peace.